Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm pleased to join you this afternoon from the traditional unceded lands of the Algonquin people. I am Gary Anna de Sangre, the Member of Parliament for Scarborough Rouge Park, and we're joined virtually by a number of um, individuals. Uh, first, uh, Dr. Dushin Nantakumar, who is the editor of the Tamil Guardian, Archana Ravi Chandradeva, who's the Executive Director for the People for Equality and Relief in Lanka, or PEARL, uh, my colleagues, the Honorable Michael Chong, a Member of Parliament for Wellington Halton Hills, Nathaniel Erskine Smith, MP for Be Beaches East York, His Worship Patrick Brown, the Mayor of Brampton, MPP Vijay Tanigasalam, Scarborough, uh, Member of Provincial Parliament for Scarborough Rouge Park. Over the past two years, I have received numerous complaints of Facebook and Instagram accounts of Tamil Canadians receiving warnings and or outright suspensions of their accounts. This also included one small business whose Instagram account was deleted. Yesterday, I received the devastating news that Tamil Guardian um, Instagram account was disabled without cause, notice, or any forewarning. For the record, Tamil Guardian is the only English language website that reports on Ulam Tamils and the Tamils within Sri Lanka. It is a highly regarded as a credible source with reporters on the ground on the island. The editors are often called upon as experts by media outlets such as the BBC and Al Jazeera. Their opinions are read by policymakers from around the world and they have covered the United Nations Human Rights Council proceedings extensively over the past 12 years. I personally use Tamil Guardian as my primary source of information relating to Tamils on the island and I suspect many parliamentary colleagues in Canada as well as around the world do so as well. Tamil Guardian journalists have had to flee Sri Lanka due to safety concerns. And as you may know, Sri Lanka continues to be one of the most dangerous places to work as a journalist. Where leaders, prime ministers and parliamentarians are often cited. Prime Minister Miliband and Cameron have written op-eds op as well as sitting opposition leaders in the United Kingdom. Tamil Guardian, therefore, is not a fringe media or a propaganda machine. It is what a traditional journalism shop ought to be, free, fair, critical, and accessible. The stunning move by Instagram to disable the Tamil Guardian account has sent chills around the world to Tamil activists. It is clear warning that if you critique the Sri Lankan government for violations of human rights, including war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide, or if you document or offer perspectives on Tamil issues, you are under greater scrutiny. What Sri Lanka was unable to do, that is to silence Tamil Guardian, Instagram managed to do summarily. I therefore call upon Instagram to restore the account and, and verify it. I also call upon Facebook and Instagram to immediately review its policies relating to Tamil-run sites and accounts of Tamils as it now appears to be targeted. This afternoon, I've written to Facebook Canada seeking same. So with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Dushin Nandakumar, who's the editor of the Tamil Guardian, to walk us through uh, the recent events uh, with, his, uh, with the, the Tamil Guardian news outlet. Thank you very much, um, Gary. So thank you all for attending today. My name is Dr. Dushin Nandakumar, and I'm one of the editors of the Tamil Guardian. As uh, uh, Mr. Anand Sangri said, and you may have seen this week, without any prior warning or notification, our Instagram account with over 19,000 followers was disabled. Despite our attempts to reach out to Facebook, we received no response or explanation. This is not only disappointing, but we feel it's also dangerous. This is not an accident or a mistake. We believe that this is a deliberate silencing of our voice on one of the largest social media platforms in the world. And it sadly follows a disturbing pattern censoring Tamil voices, both in Sri Lanka and online. This is what we know so far. As we revealed in an exclusive piece this morning, there have been concerted attempts by the Sri Lankan state to attack the Tamil Guardian. In December last year, Sri Lanka's Criminal Investigations Department, a unit that's infamous for human rights abuses, wrote to Twitter and formally lodged a request to remove our posts. Twitter refused and notified us instead. Meanwhile, in Sri Lanka, our correspondents, many of whom work for us in secret, were facing increasing harassment from the security forces. 
part of a general trend of press suppression that's taken place since the election of Gautavaya Rajapaksa as president in 2019. Under this regime, we've seen poets and journalists jailed under draconian anti-terror legislation. And we've seen an increased surveillance of social media. Indeed, some Tamils have been detained by the security forces over posts on Facebook. The Sri Lankan military has also openly said that it does monitor social media. We know that there's a unit focused on cyber security. And we know that Shavendra Silva, a credibly accused war criminal who's currently banned from travel to the US over his role in executing Tamils, has labeled threats from social media a serious concern for national security. At recent, in recent months, we at the Tamil Guardian have felt the impact of that. As Mr. Ananda Sangri said earlier, we are a widely respected and credible news outlet. Our work has been cited in governmental and NGO reports around the globe. We have op-eds and interviews from Oscar-nominated artists to a sitting British Prime Minister. We often provide crucial coverage from the ground in Sri Lanka. Coverage of a conflict and of a situation that often doesn't make it to the mainstream English or Western press. We do an important job of challenging the Sri Lankan government's repressive narrative. And our whole team works very hard, none more so than our correspondents on the ground. And they do it despite knowing that their work puts us in the scope of the Sri Lankan state. But we do it because we know that our work is important. We know that we shed light on issues that the state tries to hide. And while our work has never been removed off Twitter, whilst we've never been accused of breaching any laws in the UK, the US or in Canada, we've never had any concerns raised by relevant authorities. We've noted how Instagram and its parent company, Facebook, has been increasingly censoring us. Since 2019, when Roger, uh, Gordbaya Rajapaksa came back into power, we frequently had posts removed for the alleged praise, support or representation of a terrorist organisation. News articles that are covering events on the island, even things as, such as remembrance ceremonies that have taken place legally and in some instances with police supervision, have been removed. Historical photographs documenting Sri Lanka's ethnic conflict have been removed. Even political artwork has been removed. We know we're not alone in this. Other Tamil nationalist content and accounts have also faced similar hurdles. We've reached out to Facebook. We've held meetings with them directly earlier this year. We've sent emails, we've sent briefs, we've sent documents over for verification of our accounts. We've even complained to the oversight board. But frankly, all of our efforts have been fruitless. This week's move to disable our Instagram account was the culmination of all of that. The timing's not also not coincidental. The Rajapaksa regime is economically teetering. Godbaya Rajapaksa is due to visit Glasgow next week where mass protests are planned to greet him. And the Tamil National Heroes Day is coming up next month, an annual commemoration and a time when Sri Lankan state repression usually begins to ramp up. On top of all that, pressure is piling on the Sri Lankan state for accountability for genocide. What is shocking, though, is Facebook's complicity with this regime. It's effectively colluded with the Rajpaksas in suppressing free speech. Facebook isn't protecting anyone by removing our content or disabling our accounts. The only people that Facebook is protecting is the Sri Lankan state, a state that's ranked 127th out of 179 countries by Reporters Without Borders, a state that's murdered more than 40 media workers since 2004 alone, a state that to this day continues to jail poets, jail journalists under the supposed crime of terrorism. It also comes at a time when social media platforms such as Facebook are currently under greater scrutiny, scrutiny than ever before. Their conduct and the values with which these companies function are being examined and questioned even more closely. It's time now for them to provide answers. Why is a credible news outlet's account being disabled? Why is Facebook censoring Tamil voices? Why are they siding with an authoritarian and racist state? Where do their values lie? These are the questions that we demand answers to. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nanda Kumar. I'd like to now um, ask uh, Archana Ravichandra Deva, who's the executive director of Pearl, to offer some comments. Hello, everyone, and thank you very much, and beyond in the Sangri, for organizing this press briefing and for the opportunity to speak to you all. Um, 
as he mentioned, my name is Archana and I'm executive director of Pearl. I just wanted to echo the comments made by um, Dr. Dushyananda Kumar today. Over the past few years, censorship of Tamil expression on social media has significantly increased. So when Facebook disabled Tamil Guardian's Instagram account, it sil silenced a vital news outlet that for many across the world, including in Canada, remains their only source of news for events regarding their homeland in the English language. The information that Tamil Guardian provides is of immeasurable value for organizations like Pearl, who rely on Tamil Guardian on a daily basis for our important and time-specific advocacy efforts. So we are shocked by the actions of Facebook and Instagram, which not only mirror the Sri Lankan government's decades-long censorship, but also disrupt Tamil's free expression rights on a global scale. Tamils are familiar with being silenced. The Sri Lankan government has shut down numerous news outlets in Sri Lanka and has kidnapped, tortured, and killed journalists for decades. Being a journalist in Sri Lanka, especially a Tamil one, remains an incredibly and extremely dangerous position. Censoring Tamils, as well as other critics, feeds into the Sri Lankan government's entrenched Singhala Buddhist ethno-nationalist um, religious supremacy by targeting the civic rights, freedoms, and spaces of other groups. In particular, the Sri Lankan state has heavily censored Tamil memorialization or the commemoration of lost loved ones, such as around Muli Vaikal and Maviranal events, which allow the community to come together to collectively mourn. In the virtual and COVID era, Social media has played an incredibly important role in collective remembrance. Unfortunately, big tech has denied the Tamil community their right to memorialize and express their grief, both in the homeland and abroad. I think we also have to understand the importance of social media for the diaspora, many of whom fled Sri Lanka due to the decades of violence and how, who now exist far away from their home, their families and their community which are flung across the globe. Social media is often the only thread that holds people together and builds community and solidarity. So over the years, harmless hashtags, art, poetry, and informative uh, videos put together by Tamils on the homeland and in the day have been taken down. Facebook and Instagram delete and censor photos and illustrations, um, even if something as benign as a Tamil national flower, the Gorio Salili, this censorship compounds the trauma within the Tamil community as they find themselves unable to express their emotions without fear of repercussion. So we are aware of the Sri Lankan government's previous attempts to control and censor social media, including its use of an anti-terrorism um, cyber task force to monitor and counter the claims of the Tamil diaspora online. And so it is important that I think in the event that Sri Lanka has influenced Facebook in this decision, we look to Canada to help ensure that these types of pressures from the government cease. So we call on Canada to urge Facebook to restore Tamil Guardian's account and to make a full public disclosure of the reasons for disabling the account in the first place, including the existence of pressure from the Sri Lankan government. I think this should be a key priority for Canada and its commitment towards international justice and freedom of expression. Uh, we also call on Canada to take immediate steps to ensure such um, arbitrary censorship does not occur in the future. Thanks very much. Thank you, um, Archana, for those comments. Um, I now would like to ask His Worship Patrick Brown, the Mayor of Brampton, uh, for some comments. I want to thank uh, MP uh, Gary for taking this initiative to bring us uh, together to speak about this egregious act of uh, censorship. And I know uh, MP Gary has been outspoken on human rights issues before, and thank you for including me in this uh, collection of voices that are very concerned about what has happened to the Tamil Guardian, um, a country uh, that has witnessed uh, a Tamil genocide and now, years later, still avoiding uh, reconciliation, still refusing to account for the 
uh, atrocities that happened uh, on their watch now engaging in silencing media. Um, the fact that we're seeing uh, um, publicly for the world to see uh, diminished in Sri Lanka um, is not something that we that can go uh, unchallenged. And, and I believe we have a responsibility as, as Canadians. You know, from day one, because the diaspora is so large in Canada, from day one, Canadians have been outspoken. Uh, it, when we boycotted the Commonwealth in Sri Lanka, when we stood shoulder to shoulder with the uh, Tamil diaspora um, about the horrors of the genocide, um, I thought Canada's voice was important. And, and I, I think there's an opportunity for, here for us to say that the media should not be um, infringed, that the Tamil Guardian should not be uh, censored, that uh, democratic voices must be uh, heard. And uh, there are important stories to be told. Um, just as recently as last year, when we saw the destruction of the Mulivakal monument, um, it shows the horror uh, has continued, that uh, human rights continue to be true, that there is, uh, on top of a physical genocide, we're seeing a cultural genocide uh, that continues in Sri Lanka. And so um, I hope that uh, we can speak loudly in international circles about this. I hope that we can be one of the many voices uh, around the world is saying this must not be tolerated. And, and Facebook um, has a social responsibility here. They have a corporate responsibility. They should not be complicit with the egregious human rights abuses that are occurring uh, in Sri Lanka. And uh, I'm glad that we have a member of the federal government, an MP Gary, um, who is speaking so loudly um, about this. And I just wanted to say we uh, passionately support you in the city of Brampton. Uh, I have heard from many residents who are concerned uh, about what is happening uh, back home and have this um, reputable, uh, fair uh, source of news um, is uh, having their uh, rights curtailed. And uh, I have many constituents that are aghast by this. Um, and Gary, we join um, your uh, uh, pitch uh, to make sure uh, that our voices in Canada are heard. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Brown. I'd like to now uh, ask MPP Vijay Tanigasalam uh, to offer some words. Thank you, MP um, Gary and Sangri for the invitation. Um, as we all know, the Sri Lankan government is known for its uh, track record in uh, suppressing freedom of the press and media. And many attacks um, happen in media outlets in Tamil areas including the assassination of uh, Tamil journalists and non-Tamil journalists in the island. Not only journalists, they have also been attacking um, local Ontario-based small business as well. Uh, earlier this year in February, one of my constituents um, was affected by such an incident. His business was shut down by the Instagram uh, due to complaints from the Sri Lankan state and their apparatus. And I had to get involved in that case um, with the help of the Ontario uh, Small Business uh, Ministry and the former Associate uh, Minister, uh, Minister Sakaria. And we were able to reinstate that um, his uh, the small business account. However, the attack was um, very pre-planned and the business owner lost significant amount of money during the Valentine's Day uh, week. Uh, the freedom of expression, press freedom are all important part of what makes us, uh, uh, Canada, a beautiful country. But unfortunately, we know that Sri Lankan state uh, clearly doesn't believe in these, the basic values of freedom. And for the people who fled genocide um, from Sri Lanka and now living in Ontario, Canada, and across uh, the world in the diaspora, the media is the connecting point uh, connecting them back to back home. And these attacks further affect the connection, the bridge that they have with their family members in back home. And I know many constituents of uh, mine, they, they sit in front of their computers and, and phones uh, on a regular basis to get the news um, through these uh, news channels. And as soon as something troubling happens, they reach out um, with my office about concerning their, uh, about their families and their loved ones and the ongoing uh, human rights violation and genocide. And this happens regularly, like almost like month to month, weekly basis. The media channels like Tamil Guardian, they play a key role in 
in the lives not only like Tamil Canadians in Ontario and Canada, but also like the diaspora across the globe. And it's affecting daily lives. As I said, it affected a small business here in Ontario. And I see not, a, not just the older generation, it's also affecting the next generation. They also get the, uh, the news on their social media channels, um, on either Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. And I get these updates because they tag me to raise their concerns regarding their family members and about the motherland. So anyone who says anything against Sri Lankan government and the Sri Lankan state is going to is not going to stop uh, their attack. I think it's um, at this point this is an ongoing issue for a long time. Happened to many pagers, happened to small businesses in Canada in Scarborough, and now it happened to. Uh, uh, media, uh, significant media. So I think as a community, we have to come together. As a Tamil community in Canada, we must come together to oppose uh, such at at attacks on the the community spaces, an attack on the voices that are representing on what's happening uh, in Sri Lanka, especially on what's happening in the northern uh, east, northern east of Sri Lanka. And that's where the ongoing uh, crimes against humanity, war crimes, and the genocide uh, uh, took place and continue to take place in different forms and shapes. Again, I want to thank uh, uh, MP Gary for the opportunity for having me here today. Thank you, MPP um, Vijay Tanikasalam. Um, uh, Dushin, I think it goes without saying that um, there's a great deal of respect and support for the work of Tama Guardian. Um, I like to, um, you know, before we go to questions, see if uh, uh, MP Chong or Erskine Smith uh, want to add uh, add anything. Um, I know um, Erskine uh, Nate was just uh, logging in uh, right now. Hi, hi, Gary. It's Michael Chong. I'll just say a few brief remarks. First off, uh, can you hear me? Yes, Michael. Thank you. Yes, Gary. Thank you very much for inviting me to this event, uh, this press conference. I appreciate you organizing this and taking the time to reach out to me uh, personally to invite me to this. I'd like to thank uh, the members of the Tamil community and the Tamil Guardian for bringing this issue to our attention. Uh, we, as conservatives, believe in freedom of the press, as do all members of parliament, and we believe in freedom of expression. And so uh, the events that have been brought to our attention are concerning. Um, and at minimum, it's clear that Facebook owes the community and the Tamil Guardian an explanation as to uh, why this happened and the reasons behind it. Um, so we will continue to monitor the situation and uh, keep a close eye on this because uh, we all believe in standing up for freedom, human rights, democracy, and the rule of law. And um, it's important that these values are held both here and abroad. And so thank you, Gary, for inviting me here. And uh, it's also good to see uh, my former colleague, Patrick Brown, Mayor Brampton on the, on the conference as well. And uh, once again, thank you all for um, inviting me and uh, bringing to our attention this important issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for joining us. And uh, uh, finally, I think the last word goes to Nate. Thanks, Gary, for bringing us together. And uh, I'll be brief just to say, as someone who has been vocal and critical of Facebook and its platform in failing to address some of the harmful content on its platform, at the same time, when they make these decisions, it's incumbent on Facebook to be transparent provide credible explanations, and especially when freedom of the press is at issue, to, to work with partners to, walk, to, to manage these issues and to solve these issues. And this is an issue that has been on Facebook's radar. This is an issue that has been flagged for Facebook repeatedly previously, not only by the Tamil Guardian, but, but by those of us in Parliament. And there needs to be proper due process and, and a proper explanation when a decision like this is undertaken that has such great consequence. Thank you. Um.
Thank you, Nate. I, I know you've, uh, you know, we've had a number of discussions on this uh, in the past, so I really do thank you for, for joining us and adding your voice um, to, the, uh, to the concerns that are raised today. Uh, and with that, we'll go to questions. Um, uh, if there's anyone on the line, we'll be able to, to answer. Well, I will now take questions um, on, from reporters on the phone. A reminder to reporters, one question, one follow-up. Nous allons maintenant prendre les questions, euh, les questions au téléphone, un petit rappel aux journalistes, une question, une question de suivi. Operator, do we have a first question? Thank you. Merci. The first question is from, la première question est de Tom Korski, Black Locks reporter. Please go ahead, à vous la parole. Uh, for Mr. Ananda Sangri, uh, Mr. Chong, uh, and or uh, Mr. Erskine Smith, I was doing well until Mr. Erskine Smith spoke, and I seemed to get the impression that it wasn't censorship that was the problem. It was censorship of legal content without due process. That's not the same thing. Uh, so my question for the MPs You're aware your own cabinet has, on July 26, tabled a discussion paper to appoint a digital safety commissioner that would block legal content, including offshore content by the Tamil Guardian, based on a complaints-driven system. Legal content could be blocked with takedown orders and secret hearings. So my question is, do we oppose censorship only when it's our friends Or do we oppose censorship of legal content on the internet as a simple bedrock principle? I think it's it's safe to say that uh, the freedom of uh, the press is uh, so vital uh, to a healthy democracy. And uh, as as a parliamentarian, uh, I support uh, the right of media outlets to um, to uh, express themselves. Um, and of course, in this case, is the Tamil Guardian. Um, Nate, I don't know if you want to add anything to this. I would add that there has long been and continues to be a clear distinction between legal and illegal content. And my focus is ensuring that illegal content, we, we've long had rules around child exploitation content, for example, in our criminal code. And the, the focus of a digital safety commissioner surely should be twofold. One, to make sure that social media platforms are prior to, prioritizing the takedown of illegal content within a reasonable period of time. But two, to ensure that there are, is public accountability in relation to public rules. Organizations, Can, like Facebook, cannot be solely responsible for enforcing public rules. And so an important part of that online harms proposal, and we can debate the, the merits of every detail, but fundamentally, we need a public due process system to manage takedown by these large platforms. And here's a perfect example of why a due process system like that is critically important. Thank you, Nate. Um, Michael? Yes, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, we do not support censorship. Um, it's not clear what's happened in this particular situation. As some of the uh, interveners in, on this press conference have indicated. And so I think that Facebook at minimum needs to provide an explanation as to exactly what happened. Um, that said, in general terms, I can say clearly that we don't support censorship. We don't support restrictions on freedom of the press. I think that was clear in the last parliament when we opposed uh, Bill C-10. Um, and we think it's a fundamental uh, foundation of a free and democratic society, freedom of expression, freedom of the press. Um, and as uh, Nate Erskine-Smith has pointed out, you know, that extends to the limit of where um, of legality. And there are clearly instances such as child exploitation that um, freedom of expression uh, does not uh, include. And so, you know, we've been clear on this uh, in the past and we're clear on it today. Thank you for the question. Uh, thank you. I, I have no follow-up. Perfect. Next question. Thank you. Merci. The next question is from La prochaine question est de David Rivoli, de Logic. Please go ahead. À vous la parole. Hi, my question is for the uh, the Liberal MPs, and really, it's I'd just like to give you a, another chance to answer Tom Korski's question. 
The legislation that your government is consulting on is really detailed, and it, the widespread criticism of it is that it'll basically require digital platforms to take down content that pretty much anyone flags as hateful or terroristic within 24 hours or face the risk of nuclear fines. And I'm having difficulty understanding how you square your government's plan with the outrage you're expressing today in support of an outlet that is uh, so can you can you give another shot at explaining yourself here? Well, I, I think I'm very clear on um, you know on the need to have uh, free expression. I think that's been expressed a number of times by a number of uh, different speakers today. Um, there is an absolute need to have transparency when these decisions are made. There needs to be due process, um, and and I support. Uh, 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 the bill uh, or a bill that uh, that will reflect uh, these principles, and and I think it's important that um, in the absence of of uh, proper accountability, uh, particularly from the tech giants, there there needs to be um, other alternatives. I know other countries have uh, measures in place, and there needs to be alternatives that would um, allow uh, for for governments to uh, to have uh, some say in 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 uh, the type of content uh, that is out there. And I would add, as someone who sat through hearings on the Privacy and Ethics Committee and made recommendations, uh, unanimous recommendations, by the way, all party, to ensure that there were rules for platforms to take down manifestly illegal content within a short period of time. If we look to the German model as an example, the requirement that I would support certainly would be where it's obviously illegal, it should come down within a short order, not simply because someone flags it, but because there has been an independent look at it to say, yes, this is obviously illegal and should be taken down. And where something is more borderline, then there should be a longer review, of course. And we we need a credible explanation, number one. But two, an important part of, of the proposal is, is a proposal for due process, because what you have here is you have the Tamil Guardian that has raised on multiple occasions related issues with Facebook and Instagram, not had proper engagement and fulsome engagement from this company. And there is no clear legal public due process avenue for them to pursue. And so an obvious element of any set of public rules is to ensure that there is a public process for due process. Follow up. So will each of you gentlemen be proposing that your government take a different approach to this issue than it has so far in, in line with what you've just been saying? I, I can speak for myself simply to say, I, I think there are different colleagues that will have different views on the exact timeline for takedown. We're talking about illegal content though. And, and so, yes, my focus will be to say to the government, we should be focused on illegal content. We should be focused on ensuring proper due process. And we should be focused on making sure that there isn't over censorship in response to the public rules that we propose. And I think the government has actually, when you consider the online harms proposal, they are proposing a system of public rules to create due process. And that's exactly, if that were in place today, I don't think we'd be having the press conference because Tamil Guardian would have a clear avenue to rectify the challenge that they face. Next, next question. Thank you, merci. There are no further questions registered at this time. Nous n'avons plus de questions pour le moment. Thank you. This concludes the press conference. Ceci me fait la conférence de presse. Merci.